Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida. And if you are doing pixel peeping, you're blowing up your images to 100% because you're trying to figure out how much noise you're getting in your images. And you're trying to compare this sensor to that sensor. And what about the 40 megapixel sensors versus the 26 megapixel sensors? And you just want to find out which one is the best in low light performance. You need to stop. You really do. Because you're doing it wrong. Before we get started, be sure and check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb. It's available anywhere that podcasts are found. I have a group on Facebook. It is called Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. Join the community there and follow me on Instagram at Boo Ray Perry. All right, we're going to talk about pixel peeping. And this is one of those things that, um, you know, I love photography and I love cameras and, and, I, and I, I love everything about it. But one of the things I really love on a personal level, it's just in my life, is when I discover that something people are doing or some accepted trope or accepted thing that everyone just knows this is the truth when suddenly that's discovered to not be true when, when we find out that we've been doing it wrong all along i just love that right I, i'm the guy that's going to corner you at a party and try and, and and have this discussion with you and you're like dude i just want to enjoy my martini really you know <laughs> i just i love this stuff and there is nothing more true than the fact that pixel peeping is bad for you. Not just bad for you, but you're actually doing it wrong. So let's talk about pixel peeping. Let's talk about what it is and let's talk about why you shouldn't be doing it. So pixel peeping usually refers to when you want to compare one image to another image. You want to look at the sensor and you want to see which one of these sensors works the best in low light. You know, which one has the most grain or the most noise. So you put a picture in your computer and you blow it up to 100% so you can really get in there and look and see how much noise is in the image. Now, I'll show you an example. Uh, I have a, a Fuji 40 megapixel sensor, the brand new sensor on the X-H2, and I also have the 26 megapixel sensor, and this is the sensor on my X-T4. So, the question is, which one of these sensors works best in low light? So, let's take a look at two images. We're going to blow them up to 100%, and we're going to take a look at these two images and figure out which one has got the most noise and the most grain. Now, this is shot at 3200 ISO, and if you look at these two images, I think, at least when I look at it, especially if you look at the green area on the chewing gum box, it seems to me that the X-T4 has better low light performance than the X-H2, right? It's pretty obvious, I think, at 3200. You can, you can see it even more if you look at it at, say, uh, 12.8, you know, 12,800. You can really see it a little bit more there. But the X-T4 definitely has better low light performance than the X-H2. So problem solved right? We can move on. We can go on with our day because we have looked at these pixels up close and we can clearly see there's more noise and more grain in the X-T4. But here's the thing. We really can't because we're not doing the test correctly. We're not doing it properly. So let's talk about sensor size. Let's talk about a 40 megapixel fence sensor versus a 26 megapixel sensor. You cannot look at these two images at 100% and then compare them because it's not a true comparison. So, think of it this way. Two sensors, right? Over here, we'll put this one on this side. Over here we have the 40 megapixel sensor, and over here we have the 26 megapixel sensor. Now, these are, these are not the sensors. The sensors are the same size, but what I'm talking about is the size of the image that comes out of the sensor. So the image that comes out of the 40 megapixel sensor is gonna be bigger because it's 40 megapixels, right? So it produces images that are bigger. And when you blow them up to 100% in your computer, the image blows up really big. It blows up literally bigger than your computer screen can show. So you're looking in at just a small piece of the image. It blows it up bigger. And when it does that, you're looking at two different pictures now and comparing them, and one of them is bigger than the other. And you're looking at them from the same distance. Now think about that for a minute. I'm looking at this picture, and then I'm looking at this picture. Which one of those pictures do you think is going to look better to me? Well, it's going to be this one. It's going to be the smaller one. Because if you have any experience with photography or, or working with digital files at all, you know that the smaller the picture is, the better it looks. The more clarity you get. I mean, how many times have you looked at a picture, like you're in your 
processing software and you look at your thumbnails and you go oh that's a good picture over there and then you click on it and it comes up large in your monitor and you realize that it's out of focus and you can't tell it's out of focus when you look at the thumbnail because the thumbnail is being reduced down to a smaller size but the pixel density stays the same so if there are 40 million pixels in this file when you look at it over there there's still 40 million pixels in it it's just smaller so the density the amount of pixels per square inch is much greater and when you do that clarity gets much better everything gets much better this is why thumbnails always look better than full-size pictures so you're kind of looking at a thumbnail versus a full-size picture when you compare things at 100 percent because when you blow them up to 100 percent they are not the same size the 40 megapixel file is going to be bigger than the 26 megapixel file so if you really want to compare them accurately you have to compare them at the same size because that's what you would do in real life if, if, if you had two pictures two prints by the way this works for prints as well if you had two prints right one was an 8 by 10 and one was an 11 by 14 and you wanted to compare these two prints you would look at the 8 by 10 and then you would look at the 11 by 14 but you would back up from the 11 by 14 you would back up a little bit because it would be too big it would be too close you know there's a comfortable viewing distance for every size so you back up the bigger it is the more you back up but when you're looking at it at 100 percent on your monitor and you're looking at just a small part of it you don't back up you just look at that one small part which is completely inaccurate so let's look at these pictures again instead of blowing them up to 100 percent let's have them be the same size so now if i put these two pictures side by side same two pictures we just looked at a minute ago we conclusively decided that the xt4 had better low light performance than the xh2 now let's look at them does it still look that way look at the area of the green look at the noise hmm now not so much not only is it not so much but i think the xh2 actually looks better I think the 40 megapixel actually looks better than the 26 megapixel image. How can that be? Because the 40 megapixel image has more density. There are more pixels per square inch. You are kind of looking at a thumbnail when you look at the 40 megapixel version compared to the 20 megapixel version because it has been reduced more. And the more you reduce it, the better it looks. And by the way, this also works fantastic with prints the same thing applies to prints you will not see if you're looking at your stuff at 100 percent and you're looking at noise you will not see that increase in noise when you look at a print it's not going to happen it's not going to happen with digital files and it's not going to happen with prints either so stop pixel peeping it's not good for you <laughs> it's not good for you if you want to find out if this new sensor has good low light performance versus the old sensor put them on your screen side by side at a view that you can see comfortably like a four by six view right in front of you and look at them do they look fine congratulations they're fine because that's what you're going to do you're going to print four by sixes or eight by tens or put them in albums or whatever you're going to look at them that's how you're going to look at them and that's all that matters for you and that's all that matters for your clients so it would be great if we could just get rid of the whole pixel peeping thing that we do because it's really leading us down a path that isn't helping us at all. All right, be sure and throw me a like, throw me a subscription, and be sure and click the bell. That way you'll get notifications when I come out with new videos. And thanks for watching.